Well, Christmas is over, the new year's begun, finally finished the Faithful Findings review, and one of my videos finally broke 100 views. To do this shit. It's Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show. Starring Matt. Today's episode, Flyin' Ryan. Hello Internet, I'm called Matt, and I like bad kids movies. I mean really bad kids movies. So allow me to introduce you to Flyin' Ryan. Flyin' Ryan is the name of a chitsy barbecue place your aunt wants to go to every time you visit. It also happens to be a very low-budget children's film from 2003 about a boy with magical flying shoes. The film was directed by Linda Shane, who's directed a bunch of other low-budget children's films. But she also co-wrote and starred in the teen sex comedy Screwballs. Guess who the other writer was? Chopping Mall and Giant Gila Monster remake director Jim Wynorski. I hate you, but I love you. Oh, this looks like a great comedy. It's always a good sign when the quote on the box is from Mr. Skins. And now I'm worried I can find footage of the director of Flyin' Ryan topless, although it can't possibly be worse than Daddy Derek's Playgirl spread. If that wasn't enough, the film was also distributed by Roger Corman. It just... never ends. The film stars Andy Weiss in his only acting role, though he went on to be involved in camera work for a bunch of TV shows. It seems there were two other actors who've ever worked on anything but this. That's sad when the director has more acting experience than 90% of the cast. So let's pop it in and see what- Didn't you get shot at the end of the Faithful Findings video? No one gives a shit. Not one single person gives a shit about the continuity of my show I can't even get all 15 of my subscribers to watch. I mean, mushroom magic. Mushroom magic. Yup, that sniper accidentally shot himself because of mushroom magic. Fair enough. Yo, rainbows. Maybe Ryan is a different type of flying than I thought. First joke of the year. Gay joke. Show's going places. Promise. So the film opens on a car driving and driving and driving. Just like all the best movies. Like Pertemic and Manos. Rock and Roll Night. Oh, God. We learn that Ryan and his mom are moving in with his aunt. Maybe his great-aunt, because she seems significantly older than his mom, but they never address that. And even though they were just driving in the day, they arrive in the middle of the night. Why would you ever move in somewhere in the middle of the night? I'm sure in the day it looks much, much worse. Kid, I'm gonna need you to dial the sass way back. Well, it's big. Nah. Uh. So they start what I think is supposed to be a running gag where Aunt Grandma is accidentally creepy all the time. Kids will love it. Old Theo lived here, and old Theo died right here. Right here? I think Aunt Rita's speaking figuratively. Aren't you? Whatever you say. Did I put in the wrong movie? Am I watching The Visit 2? Nope, okay, this is officially a Paranormal Activities movie. Ah! Christ! Sound balancing! So Ryan and his mom are in a hurry, but somehow Aunt Grandma is in the kitchen, then magically outside before them. And no, this isn't part of her unnecessary creepiness, I think they just forgot. Well, now Ryan's mom has to flee town, so he's left at the park. But who's this? You better not be a bully, because I don't like bullies. They ride and jump and... No, all they do is ride and jump. But it's a close-up with fake metal playing, so you know it's cool. Live around here? Yeah. Yeah? Well, where? So tough. You call this a soccer ball? Well, we're all British, and we call it football. So they surround him and lightly touch him into the lake. The head bully's dad shows up and scolds them. Not for knocking a kid into the lake, for disturbing the bass. He doesn't even help the drowning kid. At least I think that's supposed to be drowning. Finally, obvious love interest, which we obviously needed in a film about 12-year-olds, tries to help him, but falls in. Then they just stand up and walk out. Ryan is not a smart child. 
So this is Nikki, who's the best character because she owns a dog. And apparently the dog knows the capital of Russia. Give me a break. My dog Muggsy would know that one. Mm -hmm. Moscow. That is one smart doggo, 12 out of 10. You might want to have your dad teach you how to swim. My dad died when I was three. <gasps> Jesus, I was still getting over the scary aunt and neglectful bully father, but I was not prepared for that in a movie called Flying Ryan. Also, this is his dad's sister, aunt, whichever way that works. Why would they move in with her and not someone in Mom's family? You know, I wasn't expecting the apex of quality from Flying Ryan, but I was expecting to not hear the cameraman's footsteps. So, this is where I live. It's kind of small for such a big family. Classy. So to keep up her creepy persona, Aunt Grandma chops firewood and has clearly never used an axe before in her life. Ryan explains how his day went over horror movie music. Mom, can we get a dog now? You said the only reason we couldn't get one before was because we lived in an apartment. Ryan, we can't ask Aunt Rita to have a dog. She'd probably butcher him out behind the barn. I think this place is haunted. The guys in town say there's ghosts here. Oh no, old house is just a creepy baby. Ironing board jump scare! Why is this children's movie scarier than the film I reviewed for Halloween? Then Ryan gets the gift of a pair of used Heelys. You know, Heelys. That tennis shoe with a wheel in the heels so you could hurt yourself skating without actually putting on skates? Just roll, roll, everybody roll, 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 everybody roll! Check him out! She also doesn't give him any wheels, so he and Nikki have to go on a romantic boat ride to the cowboy town across the lake. I am exactly as confused as you are. Dirk's father fishes for bass. Yep, that's why some people call him a bass hole. Get it? Bass hole. Who is this movie for? It's too scary and profane for small toddlers, but too simple for anyone over the age of five. So this ghostly cowboy shows up and sells them wheels. The history of all of our ancestors can be felt if you just let yourself imagine. Not all eyes can see the magic. Not all hearts can accept the gifts. Can you? Is this a David Lynch film? I've not good news. That's the new what he's going to. Come back in style. Also, this is the last we see of this man or this town. So, like, Aunt Grandma could have just given him the wheels up front and saved us seven minutes. So Ryan goes out to try his new wheels when the bullies show up. Okay, that one was almost a trick. Uh, nope, that guy fell off. Look, if you're going to try dazzling us with skateboard tricks, try actually having skateboard tricks. I don't believe it! The McGuire Punk doesn't even have a skateboard! Yeah, it's almost like he's not doing something he's not good at. Also, why are there like 12 bullies when one would have sufficed? And some of them are teenagers following around this sixth grader. Want me to grind your face in, McGuire? No, my grandma's gonna do it for me. I thought she was your aunt. Whatever. So Ryan is on the run, and these guys learning karate do nothing. But tennis balls take him down. Though to be fair, when they never stop bouncing, that type of thing will happen. But the main two bullies make it out and find a girl with two four-wheelers she lets them borrow because... Follow me now for a showdown. Oh, yeah, that sounds fair to me. Ryan is trapped on the edge of a cliff, so there's only one thing to do. Take his ass beating like a man. No, he flies over and... It's as bad as you expect. Hey, McGuire, I'll get you next time, capiche? How about Friday? How'd you do it? I don't know, but I think it was the shoes. That's right, his heelys are magical. What type of corporate product placement is... Wait a minute. One of the distributors on the back is Heelys. This is literally a Heelys commercial. Ah! 
Okay, there's unintentionally creepy kids' movies like Baby Geniuses, but this is totally purposeful. Also, there's a ghost. So you, uh, seen the ghosts yet? What? Have you met the ghosts yet? You heard things, right? You're not deaf, are you? Well, I wasn't expecting Aunt Grandma to turn into jewels from Pulp Fiction. What country you from? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English and what? What? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Wind whistles and footsteps? Yeah. Well, you've heard all Theo McGugan McGuire. Oh, so that's why you could hear the cameraman's footsteps earlier. The next morning, Ryan's grandma gives him another gift. A key! Whoa. Uh, thanks, Gary, yeah. Yeah, it's a very nice antique. <laughs> Why aren't you gonna ask me what that key unlocks? The greatest treasure in all the land. Oh. No, I'm sure it's something more kid-friendly than that. Uh, a key unlocks the bar. Or a bar. That That's cool. So then they go to the bar- Oh. Did she say barn? That key unlocks the bar. No, she definitely said bar. So Nikki and Ryan go to the dock to test his flying skills. And they work. Until they don't. Nikki decides it's time Ryan learned to swim, so she teaches him at her cousin's house. And then... <gasps> gotcha, loser! Grow up. What, you think you're so tough? We'll see about that one of these days, punk. <laughs> Wait, that's it? That, that's the whole scene. You're just gonna leave. Okay. Then this shit happens. Well, you just settle down over there. We've got a special visitor coming over tonight. Ghosts. Why not? Oh, Annie, you look fancy. You expecting company as well tonight? No, of course not. Well, fine by me if you start dating. Just not one of them needle-poking doctors. It, it, just the sight of those guys just makes, makes people sick. What. Is. This. Movie. Eh, maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe the next scene will flow logically. Ah! That was so bad. I was so freaked. You're right about this place at night. Spooky. Okay, what's the capital of Venezuela? I quit. So they go to look for ghosts, but instead find... <gasps> a puppy! The next morning, the bully kid's mom yells at him for leaving his skateboard out, and his dad throws it away. I'll take the can down for pickup. And then, I'll be back for coffee, and you. Oh! So, um, uh, Ryan leaves the dog in his aunt's chair, which doesn't go well. in the house. Ah! Is everything okay? It's just a dog. I feel this movie has transcended my ability to comment on it. After that existential nonsense, Aunt Grandma gives him the skateboard she stole from the bully's trash. I don't know how this could possibly go wrong. Oh look, it went exactly the way you thought. And the bully pops Ryan's soccer ball that he brought to a skate park for some reason. I still don't get it. First piece of relatable dialogue in this film. So they explain that Aunt Grandma is a trash collector, and that's where she got the magic Heelys, although I think the magic comes from his great-grandfather's ghost? Nah, see, because his grandpa was a pilot, so it makes sense that he can defy all known laws of aviation. Before you moved in, she was probably lonely in this big old empty house. Sometimes, I'm not so sure it's totally empty. What with all the bodies piling up? I wonder if I'll be alone when I'm old. You won't. I'll always be your pal. And me yours. Good night, Nikki. Sweet dreams. Mmm. It'd be weird if I made a are you guys gonna bang joke because they're like 12. But then again, that is you guys gonna bang dialogue. So the bully and his pals show up and start vandalizing and causing property damage as revenge for actually saving his skateboard from the garbage and letting him have it back. I said leave! He smashes a bunch of stuff and steals her dog. Then this kid knocks Grandma over and she has to go to the hospital. Oh, have you ever seen such cruelty? Ooh, ooh. So after the sleepover, pillow talk, and swimming lessons, we get 
a car wash scene. There's a point at which my having a dirty mind stops being an excuse, and this movie starts being really uncomfortable. You've set up a finale, just end. Fishing, like father, like son. Assholes. So the bully tells them nothing, and they leave. That was... necessary. So they put up lost dog signs for a timber wolf, and then this happens. So Ryan's mom gets Aunt Grandma to hit that bong. And then I guess there was a music festival at the park they were filming at, so there's just that for way longer than necessary. Then one of the bully's friends comes by and apologizes. If you really are sorry, tell me where Dirk took your dog. Dirk wouldn't like me to. Dude, just tell me. Dirk sold the dog to his cousin. Jeez, that was easy. He's gonna train it to be a guard dog. He's gonna train it to be a guard dog? Okay, when even this kid thinks something stupid, you got problems. So Ryan goes to save his dog from the dangerous construction facility where they let two-pound dogs and unsupervised kids roam around. He does. Yo, Jesus was cool, but he never healied on water. Ryan returns the dog to his aunt, and Nikki reveals her sweet new kicks, and they fly off into the night. So that was Flying Ryan. It's a Healy's commercial. Seriously, this has both the plot and the budget of a Healy's commercial. It's a totally messed up kids movie with horror elements, sexual undertones, and borderline curse words for a movie that was clearly aimed at five-year-olds. Yeah, this is not good for kids. But it is great for bad movie lovers. This film is drop-dead hilarious, and I highly recommend it. Well, this has been Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show, and coming up, I think there's a full moon. That'll make sense when I make my next video. But if you'll excuse me. Come on, Scout, I'm gonna train you to be a junkyard dog. Wait. Oh, great. Bad the bully. Again. Hey, stupid. I'm here for revenge. Revenge? For punching you? What? No, for killing my brother. Bad. The sniper. No, oh, crap. I meant to clean that up. Yeah, well, now I'm gonna beat you up. Nuh-uh, I've got heelys. Ha, <laughs> more like dummies. Up top. Here's the director topless. I'll kill you! You're welcome. If her age is on the clock. <laughs> Paul. <laughs>